Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about uh, data recovery. So you might remember last time we talked about uh, data acquisition or acquiring data from a suspect system, and we had a essentially a suspect hard drive that we connected into a uh, write blocker to make sure that we're not um, writing any extra data or changing any data on the suspect device. And we connect the write blocker into our forensic workstation. Well, we're back inside our, our Windows 10 forensic workstation here. And we are going today to be doing some data recovery. And we're just going to get a little bit into data recovery uh, in terms of recovering um, kind of, well, uh, normal, <laughs> normal file recovery, essentially. So we can recover uh, images, we can recover programs, basically any data that's stored on the, the system, we can, we can attempt to recover. Now, more common file types will be uh, better recovered because more people have tried to do this recovery before. So today we're going to be using the program photo rec in windows to do our data recovery um, so i have the, the the website here i will put a link uh, next to this video uh, for all of the tools that i'm using today our main uh, recovery program that we're going to be using today is called photo rec and it's quite a good file recovery tool uh, it says photo rec as in recover photos but we can use it for a lot of other uh, data types as well so I've already downloaded this, and whenever you download PhotoRec, you get, uh, let me show you here, you get a uh, zip file called test disk 7.0, in this case test disk 7.0 win64. If you open that up, then you'll have this folder, and there's no real installer here. I can just uh, access these this, this program basically directly from uh, this folder. So what we need to do, uh, because there is no kind of easy to use installer, I am going to open up on this computer uh, C drive programs files. So basically I open up uh, Explorer, click on local disk, go into program files, and then I'm just going to uh, drag and drop this folder directly into the program files folder and I've already done that and I even renamed it test test disk um, so that will basically install test disk or photo rec into our program files folder and now we need to do one more thing to make this uh, usable or easily usable we can we can use it already but to make it easily usable uh, we need to add this to our path if we want to be able to run the program so um, the only reason I'm talking about this is because we often need to add uh, new programs, especially standalone programs like this, to our path to make sure that we can run them easily. So to add test disk to our path, I'm going to click on the address bar at the top and it says C drive program files. I'm going to go inside the test disk folder and this is the folder that actually contains the program that I want called photo rec underscore win. This is the program that I want to use. And I'm going to select everything and copy. You can either do control C or right click and copy the location of uh, my program or this folder. Okay. Next, we want to right click on the uh, Windows uh, start menu bar and go to uh, system. Okay, And then you'll get this kind of system uh, menu that comes up here. Then I want to click on, on the left hand side, advanced system settings. And we will have this advanced tab selected. And then I want to click at the bottom on environment variables. Okay. And you'll notice that there's basically uh, variables for test, which is my user here, variables for the user test or variables for the system. And both of them have a variable called path. Okay, so we are just now going to uh, edit to the variables for this particular user. So uh, in variable, click path and then click edit. And then you should have a list of these different variables. And you see I've already added test disk to my path. Uh, you won't have test disk, test disk added here. So then you will click new 
and that will add basically a new line. And then you can just paste control V or just right click and paste uh, the test disk location into your path. Okay. And that basically just tells Windows, we are, we are just telling Windows where to look whenever we're running programs. So for this user, where should Windows look if we want to run a program? So then uh, if we have, make sure you don't remove any of these other paths that are already in here, just make a new one. If we have C drive, in my case, C drive program files test disk, um, in your case, it might be located somewhere else. Um, once we have that in there, click OK, and then click OK again, and then click OK again, and then we can go ahead and close the system panel. Okay, so uh, what that did now is Windows knows where these programs are located, so then we can run them basically from the command line. Okay, and that will be important in a second. So now we want to um, run test disk against an image that I acquired last time. And the image that I acquired last time on my Windows system using FTK Imager was this 001-2016, uh, 2016 001. 002, 003, so a, uh, a multi-part disk image, okay? So now uh, I want to open a command line, type C uh, on uh, your basically run menu, type CMD, and that will open a command prompt uh, for Windows. Then we click, int or we hit enter, and then we get this black box, and this is our command prompt. Uh, it's very good to know how to use basic commands in the command prompt, um, just so uh, you can get around and run different programs. Um, if you're doing digital investigations, we, we use command prompt at least a little bit, um, so it's good to be familiar with it in both Windows and Linux. Okay, so right now I'm in the, the folder in my command prompt, C drive users test. And what I actually wanna be is in the folder uh, this folder with my disk image, and it's at C drive users test desktop cases 001 images 001. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. We can either control C or we can just right click and click copy. I'll go back to my command prompt, and then I want to change the directory to uh, the directory that's holding my disk image. So I type CD, and that stands for change directory, and then right click and it will paste the directory that we had copied. Okay, and then if I hit enter, then we see that the folder that I'm currently in has changed. Now we are inside the, the folder that contains my disk images. And just to verify that I see the disk images from here, I'm going to type DIR, which stands for directory listing or directory list basically, or directory. And I, uh, typing DIR, hit enter, and then now we see a couple different things. So uh, basically uh, a couple directories, but these are kind of system directories that, uh, yeah. And then we see the uh, first part of the disk image. We see the log file, right? Our log file that was created, the second part of the disk image, third part of the disk image, okay? So now I want to recover, let's say all of the images. I want to recover all of the uh, JPEG images from this disk image. Don't be confused by JPEG images and disk image. Disk image is a uh, exact copy of uh, a hard drive or a disk, and JPEG images are actual pictures that you would take with a, with a camera, okay? So that's a little bit confusing sometimes. So now we want to run our program called PhotoRec Win, PhotoRec underscore Win, Right, so we type in photorec underscore win space, and then we want to give it this disk image. Okay, so I type uh, 001-2016.001. Okay, and that will give it my disk image, uh, the first part of my disk image into photorec. So if I hit enter, and it's asking for permissions, click yes. Okay, now, uh, the a very important thing here, we have uh, PhotoRec has started, so that's good. We, we know that we've installed it properly. PhotoRec was in our path. If PhotoRec did not run, most likely PhotoRec was not entered in your path, especially if it says could not find uh, the command PhotoRec. 
Uh, the next thing we need to look for here is disk 001-2016.001 and then fi uh, 1,572 megabytes or basically 1, 1 1.5 gig around. Now, this is a problem because my entire disk was four gigabytes. If I don't remember how big my disk was, we can go back to the log file, double click on the log file and see uh, where did it say the size. Source data size, basically 3,878 uh, uh, 3, megabytes were copied. Okay, um, So here uh, we see that this is actually quite a bit bigger than what we see here. And the reason for that is this only loaded the first part of my disk image, right? So I want to load all of my disk image. So here I can proceed or I can quit. So I'm going to go ahead and choose quit. So just basically hit the air, uh, the right arrow key and hit enter, and then that will quit uh, the program. Okay, so normally in Windows, we, uh, whenever we're in the directory and we have these three part disk images, we can type photorec, photorec underscore, rec underscore win and then uh, the name of the disk image and my disk image part name is 001 2016.001 and in this case uh, if I want to add a multi-part disk image instead of typing the extension.001 I can just type question mark question mark question mark and what that should do is basically load up everything that starts with 001 2016 and then ha and then has a number after it However, in, in my case today, uh, Photorec is having trouble loading uh, this multi-part disk image. So I combined uh, this multi-part disk image back into a full disk image, and I took a hash value of that. So we can, we can check the hash again, md5 sum full image.dd. So I've combined uh, this these three different parts in back into a single disk image that we can see that it's the entire four gigabyte uh, disk image and the hash value of uh, this these three parts and the hash value of this whole disk image should be the same and we look at it and f7a79 if you remember from last week that was uh, that was uh, the the hash value from last time. So we know that the data is exactly the same in both of these. And now uh, I should be able to run Photorec, Photorec win on the full image, full image.dd. So Photorec underscore win, full image.dd, press enter. And then now uh, we look at it, this disk full image.dd and four, uh, basically 4,000 megabytes. This is what we were expecting. Okay, so now we can go ahead and proceed. Just click or hit enter. And then it's saying, okay, disk image, um, what kind of partition uh, do we want or do we want to look at? And it has unknown here, and that's basically looking at the whole disk, or we can focus on a FAT32 uh, partition. In this case, I know all of my images are going to be in this FAT32 partition, so I'm going to focus on that. But if we don't know where our data is, or we want to try to look for all data, then I might go with the whole disk option. Um, yeah, so I would select uh, FAT32. Down in the options menu, I, right now if I just type search, it will start searching, or I can go into options, or I can go uh, into file options. And we should look into file options first. So if I click hit enter here, these are all of the different, um, all of the different files uh, file types that Photorec will attempt to recover through the entire disk. Now, notice this is a lot more than just images, right? It's not only, we do have like BMP images, but we also have Blender data, we have zip files, compressed files, um, all of these different things. And I want to focus only on JPEG images, okay? So in this case, out of all of these things, I want to focus only on JPEG images. So I'm going to press S to disable all the file families. Okay, so S and then it removes the X from all of these. And if I scroll down, I should be able to find JPEG images. So under J, and then whenever I uh, get to JPEG, I can just uh, hit the space bar and that will select 
JPEG images only. So that's the only thing that we will look for out of all of these different types. And then I hit B to save, hit enter for OK, and then hit enter to go back to the original page. So those are the file options. Um, if we were doing this for, for real forensics, we might leave everything in there just to see what, what we can carve out, but we can focus on specific file types. Okay, so now I'm going to hit enter, uh, or sorry, I'm going to search, uh, scroll over to search and then hit enter. And then it's saying, um, we need to know the file system type where the files were stored and it has either ex2, ex3, which is basically uh, Linux file systems or other, which is fat, NTFS, HFS, riserfs. And that's mostly Windows, fat and NTFS, you'll find it in, in Windows. And that's what we want to focus on here. So we just click other. Um, and then please choose if all space needs to be analyzed. So uh, let's just let's just go with uh, the whole space, right? Uh, this is free space, so free space where a file may have been but is no longer there. Um, it will try to just find things in free space. We collect whole, then it will look for the entire disk, the files that are definitely there already, and files that may have been deleted. So we're trying to carve out or recover all of these things. So I'm going to choose whole here. Now it's where do we want to save this data? And if we, uh, this basically lets us select where we want to save it. Right now we're in this cases 001 images 001 folder. So I'm going to go to this, this two dots. And that basically means these two dots mean go up one directory. So I'm going to go up one directory. And then I'm going to go up one directory again. Right now we're in the images folder. I go up one directory again. Now we're in the case folder, right? And you guys may remember that I created this temp directory earlier. Uh, I created this temp directory specifically for things like file carving, right? So I have this temporary working space that is specific to the case that I'm in. So I'm going to carve all of these files into the temporary folder. If we look up, so we were in this folder. If we go up one, up another, then we get to this temp folder, and I'm going to save all of the carved files inside this temporary folder. So once we've selected the file that we want to save it to, we hit C, C, and then it will start carving. So here we go. JPEG's recovered 15 so far. It's going through everything. Uh, it should only take a few minutes to recover everything, but we can already go to our temp folder and we get this uh, recup directory one. It will create several of these if we have a lot of, a lot of them. Um, so if I click in the recup directory, we can go in and we're recovering or we have, uh, well, we're recovering uh, all of these different JPEGs that Photorec has found. Okay. So actually recovery is already finished. It's actually quite quick. Um, if we click up, yeah, so that's as many uh, images as it found, and that looks like that's about all the images that were on the disk, actually. Okay, so those are the uh, JPEG images. There are some other file types on the disk that were not recovered, um, and then it has the uh, report for Photorec as well. Right, so let's see. So quit, okay. So I'm just going to quit and that will take me back uh, to the original menu. So then I can move over to quit, quit, and then we get out of Photorec. Okay. So how was this working? Uh, Photorec recovered all of these, all of these different images. And if we open up um, uh, just FTK Imager here, just to use its hex viewer, uh, we can see that I've loaded up all of the, the images inside the disk and our first one F0015. Um, which we can look at uh, here, F0015, right? So this is an image and it does uh, hopefully open up, right? So it is an image and it will open up, okay? Uh, so we've recovered it. And how does uh, Photorec know um, what the image is or where the image is? And one way that it does that, it has a couple different methods, but basically the most basic way is that it uses the file header. So if we look at the top, this is the, the raw, um, we go through here, this is the raw data for these images. And if we look at the top here, um, this value uh, basically corresponds 
or this is the file header and it corresponds to a JPEG image, right? So we can see here some, some EXIF information and this is EXIF information is specific to uh, JPEG images. For example, it shows the, the type of camera that was used, the date, uh, things like that. But before this EXIF information, which is at the top of the data structure for this file, uh, we have this image or this file header. And lots of different file types have a file header. And this file header specifically relates to a JPEG image. So uh, we have this file header at the beginning. And if we could scroll all the way down, this is all of the data inside the image or for the image. And we have this uh, header or footer at the bottom, right? So this says basically the end of the image. So the top of the header says it's the beginning of the image. The bottom uh, uh, says it's the end of the image. Um, and then everything in between is basically image information. So one way that this works is we just find, we look through the entire disk and we find this header. Once we find this header, then we can just start copying all of the data until we get to a footer, right? In this case, FFD9. So we copy all of the data until we get to this footer value. And then if we just dump all of that into a file, then that should be a, uh, a valid picture. Okay. So one way that we recover data is we go through the entire disk. We look for these file headers and file footers and copy all of the data in between. And that's one way that we can, that's a very basic way that we can recover data. And it works quite well. Um, it doesn't work well whenever the disk is highly fragmented or parts of a file are located in different sections on the disk. But uh, for most cases, especially with newer, newer file systems, it tends to work uh, quite well. So this is a little bit about data recovery. Uh, we've used the tool PhotoRec to be able to recover some data. And then we used FTK Imager's hex viewer um, hex viewer to look at the file header and the file footer for this disk image. Thank you very much.